morning everyone and welcome to my video my name is crystal uh, good morning it's sunday morning um it is uh, sunday the 29th of september 2024 i'm here in my flat in the rochester good morning alexa good morning good morning and happy birthday to scotland yard opened on this day in 1829. Its address was 999 Letsby Avenue. Just kidding. But, true fact, South Yorkshire police really do have a building on Letsby Avenue in Sheffield. Alexa, what's the time, please? Good morning, Crystal. The time is 8.25 a.m. Alexa, what's the date today? Today is Sunday the 29th of September. Alexa, what is the weather outlook? In Rochester, it's 4 degrees Celsius with fog. Today, you can expect showers, with a high of 15 degrees and a low of 4 degrees. Would you also like tomorrow's weather? No. Alexa, what can you tell me a joke? What's the difference between ignorance and apathy? I don't know, and I don't care. <laughs> Alexa, whose birthday is it today? Alexa, whose birthday is it today? Today's famous birthdays include American musician, singer-songwriter Halsey, American film director Jake Schreer, American basketball player Kevin Durant, Nicholas Galatzine, and English actor, director, producer and voice artist Ian McShane. So once again, good morning. I've got my cup of coffee here. Um, so <coughs> Sunday morning. Um, I am not doing a lot today. I'm not even going out to get um, a newspaper. I've suddenly got a nasty cough. My nose is running and I feel like I've got a cold coming on. Um, <coughs> Just woke up with feeling like I've got a cold. Um, so I won't be uh, doing very much today. Uh, no. Um, I'm just going to sit and relax, I think. Um, last night I um, was flicking around Netflix to see if I could find anything to watch. Uh, and I, I couldn't couldn't find anything to watch really um so i spent an hour and a half in the evening practicing my polish because i'm trying to get to grips with the polish language it is difficult but i like i said i can write sentences i can you know horse cat dog cheese eggs I don't know any fruit yet though, I don't know the word for bananas or, or oranges or anything like that yet. Uh, time as in the seasons, and I'm learning the months, <coughs> and my god some of the Polish words for months are hard to pronounce. So I'm learning months at the moment, but as in time, as in 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, no I haven't learnt that yet. Uh, all things for you know cups saucers plates um no not that yet either so we're learning the seasons of the year and the months of the year <coughs> at the moment so i took max out for a walk last night and it was like a ghost town coming home it was going out it's always usually busy by the co-op whatever day of the week it is and whatever time because the co-op is open up here quite late and people go in and out of there obviously but when I came home it was so it was like there was nobody about at all and I was walking down the road and, and then when when there was a sudden noise I jumped out of my skin because you'd think a 
place like this, right, with blocks and blocks of flats with at least 15 families in each one, that the whole place would be thriving with people everywhere. But there's the, there's the main shops at the top and um, when you can get right through to Chatham, I think people that go out that way, go down the bottom way. Um, I don't think at the moment you can get through to Chatham. I think when people can, then um, it would be much better as well because cars would be able to get out that way. It's still blocked off at the moment. You, the only way you can get out is up that way. Um, and then you'll be able to get to more shops as well when the roads open down the bottom because it's still ongoing building works down here and the over 55 flats at the top they, they're, they're nearly finished and I think they're open next year so it'll be busy up the top um, I came back home I tried to relax um, and uh, it's listening to music it's like keeping yourself occupied I've got lots of things that I can do um, but not getting yourself stressed and angry and you know it's my life what other people have said is, is doing in their lives is none of my business unless it like overlaps into mine and causes me problems but as long as nobody messes around with me I've got no no need to to mess around in that well you know interfere in their lives if they leave me alone um it's getting colder I feel I feel a bit little bit chilly this morning so you're gonna have to start putting the heating on I expect in it well not right now because I don't want to get too overheated um so I took a phone call from my son yesterday and my son and I were talking about things and, and how it's not just me that is treated rudely um other people get treated rudely as well and it upsets them so it, it, it it's happening all around the board I think the customer social service skills in this country is appalling um, you know when people pick up the phone they're, they're supposed to represent their company and when they mur, 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 like what do you want I can't be bothered to answer the phone it's not making their company look very good, is it? I, there's no professional service, um, not over the phone. And as, I mean, this has been going on for years, keeping you on hold for, at, at, like, hours with that atrocious music. You'd think they'd come up with something different after all these years, because when I was in Gloucestershire, and this was like 15 years ago, the same same thing, like keeping you on hold with irritating music. So I'm afraid unprofessional service is all I've ever known, so I'm used to being talked to like shite. I'm used to it. People pick up the phone like, oh, what do you want? You know what I mean? It's just like I'm used to it. Um, so I sat and um, I had the telly on, I was flicking through YouTube videos, old ones, because the old ones are the best. Um, I like to watch horror films, so I mean, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was a, a bit too much for me last night, so I didn't watch that. I like the old-fashioned horror films with Peter Cushing. And Christopher Lee and so I was looking around for that and I couldn't find any uh, the sh shit on the television crap so I had a choice to like find 
I like the film Psycho, where that woman gets killed in the shower and that, that uh, motel proprietor is a nutcase and he dresses up like his mother and kills people. Um, I have got that on DVD. I've got a load of horror films on DVD. I like Johnny Depp, so I, you know I could have watched anything I wanted, really. Um, so I, you know, I, I was on my feet most of the day Friday, and I just I wanted to rest yesterday because I was absolutely knackered um, today you know Sunday is one of those days that is like what do you do and I know I said I was planning to go to church but not today not today not this Sunday because I, I just I've woken up feeling like my nose is like running like I've got a cold I don't know where that's come from but then when you mix with people, I went to Blue Water, it was full of people, so I might have caught something. I don't know, my nose is running and I've got a sore throat. <coughs> um, but then when you expose yourself to, to other people, you do tend to catch things. And I must say that public toilets are not the most cleanest of, of toilets, are they? There's always, you go into a cubicle, you are bursting for a piss. You go to s sit down and then you look in the toilet bowl and you see fucking, like, toilet paper overflowing out of the bowl, uh, bits of poo, and, and then you have, oh my God, go and find another toilet. That one's got, it's got shit on the floor. Go in another one, there's toilet paper all flying around everywhere and it's just, it's not the cleanest fault. I mean, the cleanest clean the toilets and people go and mess them up again. Um, so then, you know, they just ain't the cleanest of places. I mean, I've seen some fucking sights on trains. Horrible, disgusting toilets on trains. That stink of tuna fish. And then you find the only seat on the train is the one by the toilet that stinks of fucking fish. And then when you get off the train, you struggle to bloody breathe. Because you've been smelling that all across the journey. Alexa, LBC Radio. LBC London from Global Player. She, you know, she said I, she was going to do she, something, she did it. And she believed in what she was doing. Yes. I don't, I don't believe that the likes of Ms. Badenoch and Mr. Jenwick really do believe in this reform the rights okay. stuff that they're spouting. You know, it's, it's divisive, you know, and... And although, you know, sort of Margaret actually did a lot of bad things, I think she did a lot of good as well. Yeah. You know, the country was in, in a, you know, a fair economic state. Yeah. She had control over the party. Yes. And I think what we're actually finding now is that there's been no control over the Conservative Party. And I do actually feel that Labour's going a bit the same way, to be honest. All right. Um, you know, there's just... How, how, how do they win it back soon? Because this is the thing I'm... You're, you're different from our, our previous caller who, who, uh, yeah. and who's gone for reform and, and feels, as many callers have told me before, reform supporters, that mm -hmm. they don't believe the Conservatives. They see them as reform light. You went and, and as you said, lent your vote to Labour, lifelong Conservative voter, centre-right, you know, very much the sort of the, the positioning of, uh, of Thatcher. How do the Conservatives get win you back? What do they need to do? I don't think that they can. <coughs> Really? I can't see, yeah, because, <laughs> you know, I've never been a Conservative Party member, um, but, you know, it's sort of, I actually fall within the demographic in terms of age or whatever of most Conservative Party yes, members, yes, from what I yeah, understand, yes, yeah. um, but I've never, I've never been that, that far right, and, you know, and although, as I say, you know, there were a lot of things that Margaret Thatcher did 
that I didn't necessarily believe in, but generally I can actually follow, you know, so in terms of economy and everything else, I could, you know, I don't, I don't okay, believe that some of the miners was right, okay. but... Let me ask you, Tom Tugan, probably, and I, 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 I like James Cleaver, I know him personally, so I'm, I'm slightly biased mm. towards him, but they're, they're the two that are f the least far right, right from on top, mm -hmm. the least right wing at the moment. Do either of those two men have any appeal for you as a Conservative Party leader? Well, uh, the thing is, is that, you know, Tom Tugan, who is he? Um... You know, that's how I feel. And I do have a bit of a problem with James Coverley over that. Yeah, um, yeah, yes, it was. Yeah, you know, and I thought, yeah, you know, it's sort of a bit panned at best. Okay. Um, but, you know, it, I could have, I, you know, sort of during the Blair years and Brown, I could have named most of the Shadow Cabinet. I couldn't tell you in the Shadow Cabinet. <laughs> Do you know what, Sue? If I was if I was um, a senior Tory heading to conference in Birmingham this morning, and I was listening to you, I'd be I'd be listening to your every word, and I'd be extremely concerned that very little that uh, maybe lined up for conference is going to appeal to people like Sue, who, to my money, is a typical Tory voter. How do we win her back? Daniel's on the line from Golders Green. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Matthew. Loving the show as usual. Thank you, thank you. Um, are, are you a, a, an ex-Tory voter? I am indeed. I'm an ex-Tory voter who switched to reform because, as the saying goes, I didn't leave the Conservative Party. The Conservative Party left me. And they win you back? Absolutely not. 14 years, Matthew, of punishing tax rises when they claim to be the party of low taxes. 14 years of vicious war on frontline public services, on doctors, on nurses, on unpaid carers, on self-employed, war on drivers, war on landlords, war on small businesses. The Conservative Party over the last 14 years waged a vicious war on every sector of society and they ruthlessly betrayed the people that voted them into power. They are finished, Matthew. They're at their end. Wow. 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 Do you, now this is going to sound a bit maybe bizarre. Do you miss being a conservative? Are you? Do you feel that maybe you, you're compromising to be with reform because the Conservative Party isn't delivering any of the things you wanted, and reform are at least doing some of them? That's such an interesting question, Matthew, and the answer is no. I feel yeah. so happy and comfortable with reform, and I'll tell you why. It's mainly because of the policy. I love the fact that they want to raise the income tax threshold to £20,000, taking £7 million people out of income tax. I love the fact that they want to reform our education system to introduce life skill classes like first aid, personal finance, cooking. Uh, you know, I love those sort of things. So the Conservatives don't know what they believe in. They don't stand for anything. They're fighting like rats in a sack. They've betrayed everyone in the country. They're incompetent. They're greedy. They're crazy. They're full of corruption. It, you know, Matthew... Okay. I, 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 can, I can tell. I, I can tell. There's nothing I can say as a sneering lefty or lefty extreme or radical lefty Lib Dem supporter, really, but there's nothing I can say to win you back. Uh, and again, same thing, same thing. If I was a serious conservative heading to conference in Birmingham, I'd be very worried about people like Daniel, you know, long term supporters. Uh, more of your thoughts to come, but forgive me because I'm, I'm really interested in, in the subject of ME. We've talked about it before, you used to do it quite a lot on the television. And one of the messages that I took on board very early on was that the medical establishment really lets itself down very often when it comes to this illness. Um, and we're talking now about a bereaved father who has criticised doctors via a coroner's court um, at the inquest uh, of his daughter, uh, Maeve Boothby O'Neill, who died in October 21, uh, age 27, after suffering from myalgic encephalomyelitis for years. And the, the, the inquest into her death found that a, a lack of understanding by medical staff led to failings in the treatment that Miss Boothby O'Neill received and ultimately contributed to, to her death, which is, you know, it's, it's appalling, really, because we've been talking about ME now for probably 40 years, something like that. Well, Dr Charles Shepherd knows more about it than most. Uh, he's an honorary medical advisor to the ME Association and joins me now. Morning, Charles.
Um, morning, Matthew. Um, firstly, can I say I, I listened to your program and I know you covered it back in August, the inquest yeah. back in August. And I think you covered it extremely well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I, it bothers me that we it, we just keep, seem to be going around in circles and here we have a, another broken hearted father with, with what appears to be a legitimate grievance against the medical establishment. Yeah, I mean, no one should be dying of malnutrition in hospital and, and people with ME should not be dying of malnutrition in hospital. And, and clearly the inquest um, has identified a number of seri very serious failings in the way that the National Health Service cares and manages um, for people with ME, especially those at the very severe end of the spectrum. Um, but I, I think probably the most important things to come out of this inquest and what was called a special hearing um, which took place on Friday um, last week, where we heard some more evidence from um, Dr. Helmsley, uh, who was the medical director of the NHS Trust that looked after um, Maeve down in Devon. Um, I think there's two important things to emerge from that. I mean, first of all, Dr. Helmsley expressed his, his frustration at not having the expertise to call on um, people with clinical expertise to call on when a, a, a local hospital like that, which may not have specialists, you know, who are used to dealing with people with some very severe ME, um, but that was not available. And I'm going on press reports here from, from Sean O'Neill, um, Maeve's father, who is, uh, as you know, senior reporter at the Times. Um, but I understand that, that he has raised these concerns with Sir Stephen Powis, who is um, top person at NHS England, um, and not got a satisfactory reply to that as to why um, there is no specialist referral services or expertise available for, for, for these well, people. Well, that, that's really unfortunate because I was going to ask you exactly the same question. Why? Yeah, why yeah. is there no? Why? Why? Well, we, we did have two, I mean, we're going back several years now, we did have two hospitals, one in Essex, one in Kent, um, where these, you know, very expertise, clinical skills of dealing with this particular group of patients have been built up. Um, they no longer exist. Um, what we do have, which is a, a separate strand, but it also comes out of the inquest and the decision of the coroner um, to produce what's called a preventable deaths report. Um, in other words, lessons to be learned. What we do have, and very sadly, Maeve died in October 2021, as you mentioned, and that was the same month when we got a new NICE guideline on the management of MECFS, which I was part of the committee that produced that.